Dr. Courtney Pink from Diamond Creek Farm, and I'm here with Sweet Karen, who's from the HHYF. She's here in retirement with us at the farm, and today we're going to go over some basic principles of how to wrap a leg when a horse has a wound. Karen's nice enough to be our model today. She doesn't actually have a wound, but we're going to pretend that she has one on the front of her cannon bone. Cannon bone here is from the knee right down to the ankle, so this is the cannon bone that um, we refer to, and we're going to pretend that she has a wound right here on the front of it, which is a common place for horses to get wounds as they're kicking their leg, they might get it scraped on a fence or, or what have you. So if she did in fact have a wound here, we would clip all this hair away from, from her so we could get the wound itself exposed, and then we would clean it with um, a soap and put some antibiotic ointment on it. So at that point, we would be ready to wrap. So what we would use here is a Telfa pad, which is a non-absorbent pad, and a non, excuse me, it's a non-stick absorbent pad, so it doesn't hurt when you have to change it. So it just comes out, the packaging like that, and then I prefer cast padding to use to hold it up into place. So start down here, put the Telfa pad over the fake wound on Karen, and then start with the cast padding and you always roll it towards their tail. Why do you roll it towards their tail? Roll it towards their tail because if I'm going to pull just to make it snug, I want to pull across the front of the cannon bone, and therefore I'm not pulling along the back of her leg, which is where her tendons are. So you have less strain on the tendons if you pull in the front of the cannon bone. So you just wrap it just a couple of times around just in order to hold the talc pad in place like so. You need now to put a leg cotton, and this is a leg cotton that I, I prefer and use a lot. It's a BB satin leg cotton. It's, it's usually a one-time only leg cotton, because sometimes if they have wounds and they can have a lot of drainage, it will soak through the telpa pad, the calf padding, and, and this, and not everybody has access to washing all their um, wraps all the time. So this is just an easier way um, to be able to use it and then dispose of it. And then I also use a vet wrap, um, to secure the leg cotton in place. So when I put the leg cotton on, I, again, I'm gonna roll it out like I'm rolling towards the tail as if we did with the cast padding. I put this basically down on the ground because she has short legs and just wrap around her leg like so. Once it's in place, I take the vet wrap and I start in the middle of her leg and wrap around again in the same direction that we've done everything else and you want to go in an even fashion so each roll that I'm going I start in the previous roll I go down about halfway so it's even and consistent and I always leave a little bit of the cotton at the bottom um, hanging out and then I work my way back up and I want to have equal pressure along the whole leg so nothing is getting torn or pulled too tightly because you don't want to cause a bandage bow. And with these leg cottons, it's unlikely you're going to cause a bandage bow because there's a lot of padding on there. And then with the vet wrap, it's nice and evenly placed and we have equal um, tension and force around the entire leg. And then um, depending on how bad the wound is, um, I will change the bandage either every day for a really bad wound that's draining a lot. If the wound is not so terrible, I'll go every other day or maybe every three days. And with that and some systemic antibiotics, horse gets healed. Yay. Thanks. Thanks, Karen. Thanks, Karen.